Hi. So for topic F, which is multiplication with fractions and decimals as scaling, we're going to start off by introducing students to fractions such as these, um, and we're going to want them to start noticing the denominator. And when we translate a fraction to a denominator, the most important thing that we do is that we make sure the denominator is a multiple of 10. When we think about decimal place values, each place value after the decimal point to the right is a multiple of 10. The tenths place, the hundredths place, the thousandths place. And so we want to look at this denominator and we want to say, what is the nearest multiple of 10 that we can multiply this to um, so that we can translate it to a decimal? 27 twentieths, I know that if I multiply 20 by 5, I'll have 100 in my denominator. So let's start there. I'm going to multiply this fraction by 5 over 5. 27 times 5, that's going to be 135 over 20 times 5, which is 100. So now I have 135 hundredths, which is going to translate to one whole and 35 hundredths. And that's how this fraction will translate into a decimal. Again, down here with 31 fiftieths, I know that 50 times 2 will give me a denominator of 100. So I'm going to multiply the whole fraction by 2 over 2. My new denominator, 100. 31 times 2 is 62. And so as a fraction, I read this as 62 hundredths. As a decimal, I read it the same way. And I write it as 62 hundredths. So the next thing that we're going to have kids look at is we're going to have, uh, we're going to have them look at the scaling factor. We're going to have a series of multiplication problems. And we're going to have them look at each of them and try to determine what's the difference between each of these three. And that difference for each of these is this first fraction. And we call that fraction the scaling factor. The second uh, the second fraction, one-third, 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 that's consistent throughout each of these problems. But the scaling factor will help, um, help kids figure out what the outcome is going to be, what the, what the value of the product will actually be. And so by looking at that scaling factor and using their skills with estimation, they're going to be able to uh, compare these and see how the values will be different from each problem to each problem. So, for example, this one is 4 fourths times 1 third. They'll, they'll know immediately that 4 over 4 is equivalent to 1, and so this is going to be exactly 1 third. This one, 3 fourths, it's a little bit less than 1. So a little less than 1 times 1 third, the product is going to be less than 1 third. And 5 fourths, a little bit more than 1, this value will be a little bit more than one-third. And they'll be able to determine that just by looking at these without having to do any calculation. So now that we've done some work with scaling factors with fractions, we're going to be working with scaling factors with decimals. And uh, when kids come across a series of four problems such as this, they're going to be asked to identify those scaling factors and use that to inform them as to what the probable outcome of the, of the problem will be. So for A, they're going to be looking for that one factor that is close to one, maybe a little less than one, maybe a little bit more than one. And in this case, it would be 96 hundredths. That's a little bit less than one, and they'll know then that the product will be a little bit less than 19.4. Uh, for B, the scaling factor is going to be two hundredths. That's uh, it's pretty close to zero, and so they'll know uh, what the outcome of that one will be based on that scaling factor. Here, one and two hundredths, pretty close to one, just a little bit over. And in D, one and seventy-three hundredths, a little bit more than one, and they'll know that it's going to be the product is going to be more than twenty-nine point zero one. So in the last part of this topic, we'll be using what we know about scaling factors and changing fractions to decimals to work out problems like this. A clothing factory uses 1,275 and 2 tenths meters of cloth a week to make shirts. How much cloth would they need to make, th thank you, thank you, my assistant, to make three and three-fifths times as many shirts? The first thing I'm going to look at is this three and three-fifths. 
and I'm going to notice the denominator is fifths. In order to change this to a decimal, I'm going to want to multiply this by something so that I have a multiple of 10 as a denominator, tenths, hundredths, or thousandths. In this case, I can multiply it by 2 over 2, which will give me 3 and 6 tenths. And written as a decimal, that would be 3 and 6 tenths, 3.6. Now, I'm ready to multiply. And when I do, I'm going to leave my decimal out of it. And instead, I'm going to write down the units next to this number. Like so. This is 12,752 tenths. I'm going to multiply that by 36 tenths. This way, when I multiply, I'll be unencumbered by any decimal points, and I can just go ahead and start calculating. 6 times 2. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 1, 31. 6 times 7 is 42, plus 3, 45. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16. And then 6 times 1 plus 1 is 7. I'm going to erase these so I don't get confused. I'm going to hold my place value with a 0 here. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 5. 15. 3 times 7 is 21, plus 1 is 22. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. 3 times 1 is 3. I'm going to add my two partial products here. 9 and 7 plus 8 is 15. And now I'm going to remember that tenths times tenths equals hundredths. Therefore, my answer is going to be 459,072 hundredths, written as a decimal. I'll know that my decimal point goes between the 0 and the 7. And now I have 4,590,072 hundredths. The next step is to problematize that information. And so when we come across a problem like this, at a book fair, Vlad spends all his money on gothic novels. Pam spends two-thirds as much as Vlad. Eli spends four-thirds as much as Vlad. Who spent the most? Who spent the least? We're going to know that Vlad, since he spent all of his money, we can illustrate that as a tape diagram. And this tape diagram is going to represent all of his money. And because we know that the others, um, that the other amounts that the other customers spent is in thirds, we can show this total amount as three thirds. Next bit of information, Pam spends two-thirds as much as Vlad. Pam's tape diagram is going to show two-thirds. And finally, Eli's, since his is four-thirds, will be one-third more than Vlad, and two-thirds more than Pam. So by looking at the tape diagrams, it's very easy to see that who spent the most? Well, that would be Eli, since his is four-thirds, and Pam spent the least, having only spent two-thirds the amount that Vlad did. Uh, but going back into the problem, we're going to have kids recognize these scaling factors. Two-thirds, um, when we multiply the total amount that Vlad spent by two-thirds, we're going to know that two-thirds being less than one, the amount that she spent is going to be less than Vlad. And since four-thirds is more than one, that scaling factor will make Eli's amount be more than Vlad's.
And finally, here's another kind of problem that uses all of the information that we know about scaling factors once more. Amerigo purchased a concert ticket for $56. The cost of the ticket was four-fifths the cost of his dinner. The cost of the hotel was two and a half times the cost of his ticket. How much did he spend altogether? So to begin this problem, we're going to start off with that ticket price. We know that the ticket was $56. And I'm going to show that with a tape diagram. And indicate that that whole amount was $56. Now the next thing that we're going to want kids to notice is that scaling factor here, that four-fifths. We know that the ticket was four-fifths the cost of his dinner, so the dinner is going to be a little bit more than the cost of the ticket. Now, if I know that the entire ticket was four parts out of five, then I'll know that the dinner, when drawn as a tape diagram, is going to be one part more than the length of this ticket. Since this is four-fifths, one, two, three, four parts, then the dinner is going to be this long. Line up these lines here. One, two, three, four, the ticket, 56, and that's four out of five parts. The dinner is all five. And so now we're going to need to know how much each one of these parts are so that we can determine the price of the dinner. To do that, I'm going to take this $56 and I'm going to divide it by four. 56 divided by four. And that equals... $14. So, if each one of these parts is $14, then the dinner is going to be $56 plus another $14, which is $70. So now I know the amount of the dinner, and I also know the amount of the ticket. Finally, I'm going to be f determining the price of the hotel. The hotel was two and a half times the cost of his ticket. So, okay, now on to the hotel. Since I know that the hotel is two and a half times the cost of the ticket, then my bar diagram, or tape diagram, is going to look something like this. One length, or one times the cost of the ticket, two times the cost of the ticket, and then another half the, time, the cost of the ticket. And so I'll know that this amount is $56, and this amount is $56, and this half is going to be half of $56, which equals $28. And so adding these together, 56 plus 56 plus 28, this total amount will be $100. $40. Or I can use two and a half and I can change that into a decimal. I know that two and a half equals two and five tenths. And if I multiply $56 by two and a half times, my outcome will be the same. $140. Finally, I'm going to add up all of these amounts to see how much he spent altogether. And that will be written out as so. 6 and 11, 16 and Total amount that he spent altogether is $266.